So here we have the AC side of this system. It's a 400 amp service. We've got um, this main one of three is 175 amps feeding our um, grid panel inside. Then they've got a um, automatic transfer switch right here, which is how we're going to turn on and off the generator uh, with our system by dropping the sense 240 volt sense wires that uh, the generator uses. Whenever it detects a loss of 240 volts, it turns on. So we're going to constantly feed that with 240 from our inverter protected load panel and then use a relay to drop that in order to start and stop the generator. And so this automatic transfer switch feeds a one of the two panels inside the house. And um, this right here, this 175 amp, um, also feeds our equipment and a manual transfer switch inside. Uh, that way he can bypass our system if something ever fails. And now this generator aggregation panel, um, this basically 175 amps goes to our generator panel and 200 goes to this transfer switch to feed his, one of his other panels inside. And then we've got our rapid shutdown there. And this is a 300 amp generator, it's a LP. So now inside, we've got a transfer switch and basically normal is the grid so this is not normal in this scenario in the setup um, this is going to be uh, emergency basically to bypass the inverters if something ever fails on the inverter side and then solar is actually the normal um, so this transfer switch is just for maintenance basically or complete failure of the inverters so that you can still have power. And now this panel is directly fed by uh, the inverters through this transfer switch and we've got a 125 amp breaker right here that jumps over to this panel which is fed directly by the transfer switch outside and so what we do is he's got a lot of um, instant hot water heaters and we're going to feed this with 125 amp from the inverter side and <clears throat> I left this panel on the grid because I think he's going to have a problem eventually with all these instant hot water heaters trying to run it through these inverters so if he does wind up tripping this a bunch, he can keep this on the grid. And then if the grid fails and he needs to run a water heater, he can be careful. But he's got, I believe, six instant hot water heaters. And they draw a pretty decent amount of power. So these go up in the attic and into our equipment room over here we've got five charge controllers and somewhere around 21 kilowatts of PV that's 60 times 360 it's like just around 21 kilowatts so our we've got four Schneider Connects Pros XW Pros and I did a wire trough here because when you go over three of these inverters, the panels that they sell you are kind of pointless. And it's a lot more economical to build yourself a trough and then use one of these midnight solar 1000 amp DC combiners. And our AC side that we were just talking about comes in here. 
this is just an aggregation of all of that. So we could aggregate our inputs and outputs of these inverters. This is the uh, utility in. That's 175 amps in from that disconnect outside. And then here we've got our generator in from that generator distribution panel. And here we've got our load out from the inverters. We've got a little transformer here that I need to finish wiring up that is going to control this little relay, which is going to basically send 240 volts from our protected load out to that ATS and whatever we want the generator to turn on it's gonna drop that 240 which is what the ATS uses to, to decide whether to start or not and it'll start the generator and then when we want to turn it off we'll turn off this relay and it will resume the 240 to the generator sense and it'll shut down the generator and it's, I've got it on normally closed, so it just has to turn on to, to drop that 240. Now here we've got 1,000 amps um, coming in from the battery enclosure. And it's four 4 aughts on the negative and four 4 aughts on the positive. So we've got 500 amp breakers here for our charge controllers and we got four 250 amp breakers for our inverters and then we've got the um, battery monitor and this is a little gateway so we can monitor this thing battery monitor and the control panel each of the charge controllers the way the knockouts are on these, they make it kind of hard to put it in cleanly, having to use LBs to, we're kind of running out of room in this room in here. All this equipment, we had to mount the battery enclosure over here. So these are rely on 300 amp hour. And that's that. 51.2 volts. You see that back there? But this is where our home run comes in. So we've got our negative bus bar, four 4 out wires, and this is a thousand amp bus, half inch by two inch copper. So that goes to all our batteries. Now I custom built this rack just for this system. Had this plate lasered out for all our disconnects, one for each breaker or one for each battery. And that's lockable. Got a nice three point lock set up on it. And I made a door over here on this side. I'll just get bolted close because this isn't something you would normally access. But this is just for wiring this bus bar up here with all these breakers. This is our positive bus. It's the same thing, half inch by two inch, thousand amps rated. We've got 675 amp breakers, so everything is sized basically for our our home run wire. We can do a thousand amps on that. We can do a thousand amps on this bus. We can do a thousand amps at the battery combiner. So we have to limit everything to a thousand amps on the inverter charge controller side and on the battery side. These batteries can do 225 amps, but we're limiting them to 175 each because we got six of them. If we go above that, we need a lot more stuff. But it's perfectly sized for what the system can actually draw at max power and what it can.
push back into the batteries with the solar. That'll take you, our DC circuits run through the attic. And this house has a geothermal system, by the way, which is pretty neat, pretty rare in Florida. But our DC circuits go through the attic here. All the way out into the field where we mounted our Iron Ridge 3 inch pipe ground mount. Several hundred foot wire run. I think the array is uh, 130 feet from the house edge right here. Plus, uh, probably almost another 100 foot through the attic. So I'll take you out here and show you this array. So here's the solar array. Now we added on this section right here that's a little bit different color. It's still got some uh, the film from the factory on it. So when it's got dew on it, it looks a little different. But about halfway through the job, he decided he wanted to make it bigger. So we had to tack on some more here. So this is 60 panels, and they're 360 watts each, so it's around 21 kilowatts. And the reason this is so high is because they've got a 48 inch floodplain out here. So everything has to be mounted up pretty high. Now even with that addition, it turned out flat as a sheet of glass. But this is a three inch iron ridge pipe mount. It's got plenty of bracing on it. We're in a 145 mile an hour wind zone down here. So right now, Dusty and Steven are handling the home runs on this. So we've got strings of six paralleled to each charge controller. And this is the rapid shutdown. Show them what's up in here, Dusty. All right, we've got the orange wire going in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> PV out wire, just making these home run connections. So our, our home run wires come in right here. He's hooking these up. These go out to the charge controllers. Shorten and then... They're doing our, all our PV wire is going to come in through these gland seals. And this is the conduit that comes in the back of this box and goes down underground and then out to the house there on that box and through the attic. This just has a bunch of uh, little contactors in it. These are our little parallel connectors. So we've got five strings coming in to the rapid shutdown. Now we did a 24 inch holes here with three foot deep, filled full of concrete. Turned out really good. So this is the house that we're powering basically. And the reason he's doing this is it's kind of like his dream to have a house that can run off of solar. But he's connected to the Glades Electric Company and they've got kind of a crappy agreement with um, net metering. It's they give you three cents a kilowatt hour for whatever you send them. And so that's basically your credit is if you produce anything over what you consume, you get three cents a kilowatt hour. And if you consume anything, they charge you, I think it's 13 cents a kilowatt hour. So we're gonna basically be operating in inverting mode and 
covering his entire load of his house and we're gonna have the the grid is gonna be our our backup our first backup so whenever we get below a, a certain state of charge we're gonna charge from the grid and if the grid's down and we get below a certain state of charge then we'll start the generator and recharge the batteries so it's basically a backup to a backup he's got the generator as a backup he's got the grid as a backup the generator's a pretty overkill but that's what they wanted to do so 60 kilowatts is pretty big <laughs> this ought to be a pretty good system so here in a couple minutes I'm gonna fire this thing up actually I'm need to get a pre-charge resistor I'm gonna pre-charge all the capacitors and the inverters since we're dealing with lithium here and lithium can have a infinitesimal amount of current upon initial turning it on the breaker because of uh, its low resistance so I've got a this is actually out of a Tesla this is the pre-charge resistor they use for the Tesla car I just had it laying around so that's what I'm going to use so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump one wire on the battery side of the breaker and another wire on the um, inverter slash load side of the breaker for a few seconds that will limit the current that goes into the inverters and uh, basically the capacitors and uh, it's for the safest method of the initial startup of a system because this isn't something that's going to get turned on and off regularly it's just going to be like a basically the initial startup we're going to need this and then if he ever turns this whole system off for any reason you should use this again um, that basically just protects this equipment from getting the infinitesimal amount of current which can explode the capacitors in it and I'm pretty sure it would void the warranty on all of this so we're going to use this as a safety precaution a lot of people don't know that about lithium is you need to pre-charge your loads or whatever they are uh, before you uh, turn it on fully so I'm going to start this thing up and see how it goes